Hello booktube! Today I'm going to be doing the hobby tag. Uh, this is an original tag that I've wanted to do for quite some time. Um, this tag um, aims to look at our various hobbies, both bookish and not bookish. Uh, question number one. Within your personal library, do you collect books? For example, um, specific authors, specific editions, or publishers, or genres? And my answer to this question is yes, in a way. <laughs> um, for a number of years, uh, I purposely collected science fiction and fantasy uh, fiction. As you would have seen if you watched my uh, 2022 library tour, the majority of my collection are science fiction and fantasy. Um, and for years, I pretty much targeted, collected science fiction and fantasy with the intent that all other genres in my collection, whether fiction or nonfiction, would be a very small subset, um, particularly with like the fiction, or not the not fiction, the nonfiction would be largely uh, for research, um, like a working research library where I could uh, research various things that I was writing or what have you. Um, in the past two years, that um, has changed. Um, I've dropped off collecting uh, science fiction and fantasy as much as I had in the past. And um, history has, and other genres have sort of taken up the slack as sort of what I've brought into my personal library. So I don't know necessarily if I would consider my, um, me to be collecting science fiction and fantasy anymore or as much since it's been a number of months since I've actually hauled a, a science fiction novel. Well, I think mean, it was February. But anyway, um, I also collect manga, um, which for the purposes of this tag I'll be considering um, here in the books part of uh, the tech question. Uh, manga are Japanese comic books. Um, let me show you an example. This is a volume one of um, The Seven Deadly Sins by Suzuka, um, Nakaba Suzuki. It's a shonen manga that came out in the uh, 2010s. It has about 40... I think the volume ranges in the mid-40s. Um... It's, yeah, um, I first got into manga about 10 years ago, I think. Um, I mean, I picked up a single volume of manga uh, when I was in San Francisco. I think it was volume one of Fake. Uh, which I didn't particularly care for. Um, I tend to prefer more fantasy-based um, manga. Well, generally, my favorite genre is fantasy, so in science fiction. So that pretty much spans every possible medium or media. Um, so I really got into manga about ten years ago when I picked up a few volumes of Naruto, uh, Bleach, uh, Fairy Tale, uh, Full Metal Alchemist, uh, and a few others. And I really enjoyed it. Um, but I never really stuck with it. Um, and I eventually did let that first manga collection go. Um, but in 2020, I reread fairy tale like the first 17 volumes of fairy tale after a number of years of not having read it and also i read the first seven volumes of the seven deadly sins and i 
fell in love with the genre again. And so uh, about a year ago, come July, I started to pick um, manga back up with a few volumes of fairy tale, uh, a few volumes of, um, like I think the first volume of Eden Zero, Magic, The Labyrinth of Magic, Full Metal Alchemist, Naruto, Bleach, and I've been thrilled to have them back in my personal library, and I have since collected a whole slew of manga. They are currently on my headboard bookcase, and I'm wanting to move them elsewhere. Um, it's just I've really fallen back in love with um, the form and looking to collect some more. Um, there's a bunch over there, so yeah, I've really gotten back into manga big time. Um, with the, some of the frustrations, I mean, there are some uh, volumes that I would like to pick up that I'm having a hard time finding, but that's kind of the fun of it, I guess, also, is like the hunt. But anyway, moving on to question number two. What are your non-bookish hobbies? Um, I'm going to talk about three. Uh, the first is writing, which you can consider bookish because write and make books, but I'll consider it non-bookish for the purposes of this tag. Um, although if you want to consider it, a, yeah, I don't, anyway. Uh, so I write mostly, well, almost exclusively science fiction and fantasy. Okay, mostly fantasy, almost exclusively fantasy. It's a force of habit. Science fiction and fantasy, they're a combined genre. Even though there are differences, and I tend to much, much, much prefer fantasy, I just routinely say science fiction and fantasy. Anyway, uh, so that's pretty much all I write. There are a few times when I will kind of have a science fiction project or a more realistic project. Um, I currently have about three realistic projects I'm kind of working on. And some of my fantasy projects, I think, would really work better as comic books, which I'll get to in a later question. Um, I also paint. Um, I use uh, paint mostly with pastels. Um, let me show you an example. Now, I'm not going to get you an actual stick because they are messy and I don't really have a spot to put them here without them making a mess. So I will show you an example from uh, one of my art books. Um, this is from Painting Brilliant Skies and Water and Pastel by Liz Haywood Sullivan. And these are pastels. They are um, sticks of pigment that resemble chalk, although they're not. Um, I've been painting with pastel for um, almost five years now, and I love the medium. It's There's an immediacy to it uh, that just thrills me. And I've literally fallen in love with the medium, although I don't practice nearly as much as I would like or paint nearly as much as I would like to really get good at it. Um, I did want to show some of my uh, work though. So this is a painting I did a, sometime I think early last year and I think I've shown this before. Um, and this is one I did um, last night when I was sort of had nothing much to do. Um, cause yesterday I read a bunch of manga and, um, had some free time. So I went and painted, so I did that. I also occasionally, um, paint with acrylics, uh, about two or three years ago, my aunt, uh, went to an art store that was closing and she picked up a few um, tubes of um, Liquitex Basics and I went and picked up some more Liquitex Basics and some brushes and some canvases and I painted occasionally since. Um, this is an old example of that. Um, not particularly pleased with this. 
Um, I don't nearly paint enough with acrylics to uh, really get any good at it. Um, so, yeah. And I also cook. Um, I love, I mean, I love to cook. It's um, great stress relief. This is painting um, that I like to do when I get the time, although I pretty much cook every day. Um, I like uh, trying new recipes, even if they are incredibly stressful in the process of making, of cooking. Um, well, yeah. And I have a small cookbook collection. Uh, about 1% of my library is, at the moment, cookbooks. Uh, question number three. What hobby, what hobbies have you fallen out of? Why? So, I have two. Um, obviously, I've talked about falling out with my manga collection before restarting it and uh, also my issues with uh, science fiction uh, science fiction and fantasy um, but I want to focus on uh, comic books and video games um, for years from about I would say about eight years I had a decent decently small comic book collection um, I got my first comic book when I was about seven-ish I would think and I because I remember it was either an issue of Conan the Barbarian late in its run or an issue of G.I. Joe about midway-ish in its run I and mean, I quite enjoyed them and then I picked up some more comics from Toys R Us they would have little um like bags and uh boxes of comics with like a random assortment um from marvel and dc and, and other publishers and i really enjoyed that i think that's how i picked up all of um the first part of the nightfall saga um when bane broke batman's back and a few others and um i was lucky that a number of uh, convenience stores locally um, had a comics rack that I picked up comics from and um, the optometrist I went to as a child uh, was in a strip mall where there was a comic book shop uh, ne not next door but a few storefronts down that while I was waiting for my glasses to be um, finished or me and my brother that my mom would take us to this comic book shop and we would browse and we would pick up a few comics and love that store unfortunately this was around the time that the comic book bu bu um, the comic book bubble burst so in the early to mid 90s uh, speculators came discovered comics um, because a number of earlier comics sold for tens hundreds of thousands of dollars um and if comics seemed to be a good investment on that rubric of course forgetting that those comics are worth thousands of dollars because they are incredibly rare because most copies of those comics were pulped or trashed or read to hell and back and back to hell and rarity leads to value the problem is is that current comics at the time there are tens of thousands of copies of them they're not going to increase that much particularly if a lot of people are saving them for later you basically need to read them to hell and back or to trash them for them to have any value but anyway so this happened and then people kind of realized rarity leads to value not gluttony or a glut um so the speculators kind of yeah left in droves 
with the comic book shops having um, ordered far too many copies to really feed the actual passionate fan base. And they were stuck with the bill because that's how com uh, comic book distribution operated in the 90s and to the present. Is basically the comic book shops are on the hook for what doesn't sell. Um, so a lot of them went under. I mean, I think thousands of comic book shops in the mid-90s went under. At a time when it be, it was increasingly difficult to find comics outside of comic book shops. That the newsstands, the bodegas, and uh, whatever, I mean, places that would have sold comics decades ago, they no longer sold them. I mean, the distribution model was changing, so you basically had to go to your local comic book shop. Now, the comic book shop that was that would, would have been my LCS, I uh, decided to get out of comics and I think they started selling um, gaming stuff, like card gaming stuff. Um, so I think we got a pretty good haul with the, like they're effectively going out of business sale as they kind of cleared their uh, comics. But it was sort of heartbreaking because that was the comic book shop we went to. We were rather fond of um, the employees. But it happens. And the only other comic book store, well, I mean, there are technically two, but one, uh, Golden's, I don't know at the time what they were because it wasn't until a few de a decade or so before I actually started going to Golden's. Um, but I know nowadays Golden's, um, has a very small, like, new comics section. It's basically a pull list for patrons. And then there's a few extras for other people. And an incredibly small back issue section that's pretty much, maybe not even the size of my wall right here. Um, no, it's, and so the other, only, the really dedicated comic book store is Bankston's, which is, for me, and has always really been rather inconvenient to go to. Um, and also, particularly when I was a kid, it was a bit weird. I mean, it's kind of been remodeled since then, and it looks a lot nicer the last time I went, but anyway. So, yeah, so it became increasingly difficult to go to the comic book shop and my subscriptions sort of lapsed, so I eventually had like a, my comic book collection was stagnant for years, and so when I was about 16, I decided to let it go, and I gifted it to a friend of my brother's, um, and then sort of a few years later when I was in San Francisco, um, I was lucky enough to have a, um, that there was a comic book shop on the Castro that I went to a few times and picked up a few things. And then this sort of formed the nucleus of a new comic collection that I had for a few years. And, and then I would kind of went to Golden's a bit, um, Bankston's, there was also Hastings at the time, which is sort of like if you watch the Donahue's comic book videos, although he doesn't want really to talk about them now, but um, Newberry Comics, um, it's sort of like that. It's a multi-entertainment retail store that also sells comics. Um, so I went and picked up comics from there and had the beginnings of a small collection. Um, and then I decided about seven years ago to just get rid of that collection. So I put it in a garage sale and got $20 for it. And basically what comics urges I've had since, I've largely uh, relegated to buying trades from, uh, or like reading trades from the library or like Kindle Unlimited or stuff like that. So anyway, um, and my other one is video games. I used to play video games quite heavily when I was younger. 
Um, I do still enjoy watching uh, people play video games, and but in a way, it's like I like playing video games, but at the same time, I really don't because I do have a PS4 um, that I got from my brother, and I haven't played that thing in, in like a year. Like I think I got it in June or July, and I haven't played it since maybe the end of July. It's DC Universe Online, which is about the only game I have. So, anyway. So, yeah, it would be comic books and uh, video games are sort of the hobbies that I've fallen out with. So, question number three is... Wait. No, that was question number three. Question number four. Do you regret dropping those hobbies? Video games, not so much. Um, I mean, there are times when I wish I could go back and like play Super Mario Brothers. I would love to play Cuphead and All Was Awakening and some JRPGs and stuff like that. But, yeah. Now, comic books, obviously, my, uh, yeah, I do regret having gotten rid of my comic book collection, both of them. Um, and I kind of wish I could get back into it, um, because it, I mean, looking at, like, uh, kind of observing what's going, been going on, it sounds rather interesting. I mean, a lot of it, more Marvel than DC. Um, I mean, DC tends to have the habit of, um, creatively shooting itself in the foot, largely because of all these reboots and whatever um so my intention's mostly been to, on marvel the last few years but before that it was actually more on dc uh, but i do regret um having uh given up uh, my comic book collection and sort of largely stepping back from that because like i mean i when i do read comics i largely love it and it's like i have last but the problem again of course is that it's i mean ignoring of course uh, comics unlimited and that i mean the actual collecting the floppies is rather difficult because they're limited to comic book shops and that can sometimes be quite difficult to go to i mean in my case it's been an example and there are other cases where an LCS would be tens hundreds of miles away which makes it incredibly difficult to go on a regular basis also comics are overpriced in a way I mean they are like five dollars it's a rather expensive hobby which is one of the I think the difficulty of finding comics and the price I think is more of what's keeping uh, potential readers out of the um, hobby particularly I think the difficulty in finding the, pretty much the floppies being locked in, at the LCS rather than say being on a newsstand at your local grocery store or your big box retailer or um, a bookstore or something like that but anyway um, so question number five is, what hobbies do you wish you had? Um, I'm going to talk about two. Um, I wish I could draw. Now, I do paint, and yes, you can sort of draw with pastels. Um, although that I think is mostly sort of to do like the, kind of the guide for a painting. Um, but actual like drawing with pencil and ink pen. Um, largely, um, my drawing, I, I'm talking not necessarily about fine art drawing, but um, like comic book illustration, uh, sequential art. Um, I wish I had those skills um, because again, like I mentioned earlier, some of my uh, writing projects uh, would really benefit from being comic books more so than I think novels 
and it's going to have a weird thing with uh, series. Um, but I, I love watching, like, say, David Finch and um, other comic book artists who have uh, YouTube videos and who film themselves kind of drawing. It's, it's wonderful to watch. Um, although, yeah, she's with us. So it's, a, it was, it's a hobby I would like to have, or an artistic skill, I guess you could say, that I would like to have. And I would also like to quilt. Um, I have always wanted a patchwork quilt. And I've always sort of wanted to make one. And I, that interest really peaked when I would spend my Sundays um, watching PBS's uh, crafting shows. So, okay, the thing about PBS is they're... Um, basically each PBS member stations, their schedules are their own. Um, but for the most part, I think most PBS stations tend to have a, like early afternoon and I think weekend afternoon sort of like cooking, home, uh, art, crafting sort of blocks. Um, and the PBS station that I watched for years, which went under, still infuriates me, um, had on uh, Saturday mornings, they had a, like a cooking block. And then on Sunday afternoons, they had a crafting block that featured a lot of um, fabric arts. And one of those a number of the programs was focused on quilting and I would watch them and I would just be amazed. I just, I loved how these little pieces of fabric could be sort of transformed into blocks and eventually into an entire quilt that has some really interesting um, designs on it. And it's just, it kind of blew me away and it's a hobby I kind of wish I had. But I um, never actively sought it out. And of course, it'd be a bit expensive because you have to buy a sewing machine and a bunch of equipment. But yeah. Anyway, BookTube, that was the hobby tag. Um, I'm going to specifically tag um, Steve Donahue, uh, Michael K. Vaughn, Jim of Jim's Books Reading and Stuff. Um, Bill Rutenberg, uh, Miss Reads a Lot, and everybody else if you would like to do this tag. So if you see this tag and would like to do it, you can take your, yourselves tagged. And I will see you tomorrow with another uh, tag video. I'm going to be doing the at least the London book tag created by Jim of Jim's Books Reading and Stuff. And maybe another one if I have time. So my new booktube, until tomorrow, thank you, have a great afternoon, and stay safe.